Hi and welcome everyone to this lesson in electrical design. In this lesson we will talk about the conduits and how can we size them in the electrical systems. So what are we going to do in this lesson? First we will define what is a conduit and its importance in electrical systems. We will also talk about the different types of conduits. Then we will learn about the selection of conduits. So let's start by conduit. So what is a conduit? Simply the conduit or an electrical conduit is a tube used to protect and route electrical wirings inside a building or a structure. So if you look at any building, for example, you can see this figure here, all of these lines representing conduits, okay? All of these are conduits. So you can see one conduit, two conduits, three and four and so on. Each one of these conduits representing one cable. Okay, so inside the conduit itself, we can have a cable. Okay, why? Because this tube or this conduit is used to protect and route the electrical wiring. Okay, so for example, each of these conduits can represent an electric circuit. For example, one can representing a lighting circuit. Okay, another one can represent a power circuit and so on. Okay, so each of these conduits contain a cable that will pro uh, that protects this cable and routes the electrical wiring inside the building. Okay. The electrical conduit can be made of metal, plastic, fiber, or fired clay. So it has many, many types of uh, materials. Most of the conduit is rigid, but flexible conduit is used for some purposes. So you will find that most of them are rigid. You can see this one are rigid, not flexible, but sometimes we have some flexible conduits uh, in some situations. So we have, we have discussed now the definition of the conduit and its importance. Now let's talk about some of the types of the conduits. So we have learned in the previous slides that we have many, many types of conduits. Uh, in this slide, we will talk about the BVC conduit. And in the next slide, we'll talk about the EMT uh, conduit. So first, the BVC is abbreviation for polyvinyl chloride conduit. It is one of the most popular type of the non-metallic conduit. It is a conduit like this one made of BVC material, okay, or polyvinyl chloride, similar to the BVC inside the cables itself. Now, when do we use this? We use this in the connections embedded inside the ceiling or the wall. So inside the wall itself, we can use the BVC conduit or inside the wall or the ceiling, okay, wall or ceilings. And sometimes it can be exposed like this. You can see in this figure is the BVC conduits are exposed. However, in the infrastructure or inside the building itself or inside the wall or inside the ceiling, we use the BVC conduits. Why do we do this? Because they are easy to install they are less expensive than other options or other conduits they have a lightweight and they work well in concrete and underground however when do we don't use this type when we should not use this one we should use any other type we don't use the bvc when we have areas which is directly exposed to sunlight so if we have uh, cables if these cables are in open air in and they are exposed to direct sunlight we should not use the bvc okay so if it, we have an area with direct sunlight exposure we don't use the bvc now why is this because sunlight can break down this material over time that's why bvc are not suitable for applications that are exposed to sunlight this leads us to another type of conduits, which is called the EMT conduits or the electrical metallic tubing. This is made from steel, called steel or aluminium, 
and this is more economical and thinner waller option or walled option than other conduits so you can see this tubes each one of these are conduit made of emt or electrical metallic tubing okay now you can see that you can see there are some bendings here you know that this this metallic is a rigid body however we can we can bend it we can bend it how can we do this or bend the uh, tube itself how can we do this using a special bending tool okay so this uh, tool here we can see here it is used to form the bendings you see here in this figure okay now when do we use emt it is used for connections exposed above the ceiling or the wall so i have talked now about two uh, common types which is the emt and the bvc okay so bvc are used inside the walls inside the ceiling the emt is used uh, for connections exposed above the ceiling or the wall okay however sometimes you can use also the bvc outside the wall or outside the ceiling itself okay however you have to remember that bvc are not used for applications uh, directly exposed to sunlight now the question is how can i select the conduits so you can see that we have our conduit made of bvc or any other material uh, any other material and inside it we have our cable this cable can be a three core two core one wire whatever it is okay so how can i select the diameter or the area of this conduit okay this is my own goal so according to the nec we have three cases okay the first one if we have only one wire one wire like this one okay not a cable but just one wire so this wire can fill up to 53 percent of the space inside the conduit so what does this mean if we have a conduit like this and we have one wire like this this wire or the area taken by the wire maximum area can be 53 percent maximum area and the rest is space okay you can see all of this is space okay why in order to allow the uh, cable itself or the wire itself to uh, transfer heat energy from it okay so we need some air in order to allow the heat exchange with air okay so one wire if we have one wire the maximum fill ratio how much it will fill this conduit is maximumly 53 percent if we have two wires not just one wire, but two wires inside this conduit then these two conduits together will fill only 31 percent okay if we have three wires or more for example three wires like this then the fill area of this uh, three core maximally 40 percent okay of the total space available so we have three cases if we have only one wire then this one wire have a maximum area of 53 percent so what does this mean it means that the area of the cable or one wire is equal to 0.53 of the area of the conduit okay if we have two wires then instead of 0.53 we will have 0.31 if we have three wires or more it will be 40 percent okay this is according to what according to the nec okay now let's have an example let's say for example i am using a three core cable okay a three core cable so the three core cable if you get back here three core or three wires okay so the maximum fill ratio is 40 percent so in this case you will find that the area of the cable equal to 40 percent of the conduit area okay 40 percent of the conduit area using this one we can get this equation okay so where did we get this simply area of the cable is pi 
over 4 d square diameter square diameter of the cable equal to 40 percent point four the conduit area which is also pi over 4 d square conduit okay so this representing a circular area of the cable and this one is a circular area of the conduit this will go with this you will find that the d diameter of the conduit is root of d squared divided by 0.4 as you can see here okay if this fill ratio, uh, fill ratio is 31 percent for example or whatever it is then instead of this one we will add 0.31 if it is 58 percent then it will be 0.58 okay so according to the fill ratio we put this value okay so what we need here is that the diameter of this cable so since i'm talking about a three core cable cable like this three core like this so what i need this cable like this so what i need is the total diameter of this cable okay so how can i get the total diameter of a three phase or a three core cable you can simply do this by get going to the catalog itself so you can see that the diameter of the cable itself can be obtained from the cables catalog let's say for example i have a three core cable three core multiplied by 2.5 millimeter square so 2.5 millimeter is a, a cross-sectional area of each of these uh, cores so what I'm going to do, I need the diameter. How can I get this? If you go to any code or any catalog, for example, here we have uh, Al Swedi um, uh, catalog. You can see that here for a two core cables, three core cables, whatever it is. Here I'm talking about a three core cable. So I'm talking about this section, three core cables, okay? what cross-sectional area i am using i'm using 2.5 millimeter square so 2.5 millimeter square this one 2.5 millimeter square now what i would like to get i would like to find the overall diameter approximately overall diameter okay so if you look at this one here this one the corresponding value for the 2.5 is 11.5 millimeter so the overall diameter of the three core cable is 11.5 millimeter so i'm going to use this one so the approximate diameter is 11.5 millimeter then i'm going to take this value and substitute it here so by substituting this equation root of 11.5 squared divided by 0.4 it will give us 18.183 millimeter so this should be the cross-sectional area of the conduit itself now of course we don't have 18.183 so i'm going to search for the standard values so if you look at the standard values for the conduits you will find 16 millimeter 20 millimeter 25 32 40 and so on so what i'm looking for is the next higher value so the 18.18 is uh, located between 16 and 20 so what is the higher value the next higher value is 20 so i'm going to choose the um, value of 20 millimeter for the diameter of the conduit okay so in this lesson we talked about the conduits their importance uh, different types or the commonly used uh, conduits then we learned how can we select the conduits according to the NEC code and we had now an example on it.